so we'll start from here guys first of all i should give you right what we are trying to do over here what we are trying to learn over here right see threat hunting professional or you can say like morely closely related to SOC, ir digital forensic line if you take into the production right now right there are a lot of threats which are happening a lot of threats are there okay even we cannot count i cannot count like how much things will be coming up next okay right now uh if you see the situation around the globe right russia ukraine thing is going it is going at a digital level also okay we cannot expect what is happening next right so the thing is uh the company or the corporate is demanding what from us is that consider yourself you are an individual right we are all on the baseline right now we know how to work in SOC, how same solution is working is detecting logging everything but there are certain things like attackers are very smart nowadays they try to bypass your controls whatever controls inline controls you do right proof point is there can be bypassed scpm endpoint protection management thing can be bypassed Symantec, carbon black okay force point all these things which you talk about there are techniques to bypass somebody was saying like you're good at binary right that's a very good advantage if you reach it to the kernel level uh, like it is very difficult for a SOC l1 l2 l3 analyst to understand what is happening into the machine somebody was saying like you want to learn good at the machine endpoint level right once anybody reached to that kernel layer you cannot understand right so threat hunters or you can say just hunters right now attackers basically they are rolling out those things they are packing in such a manner that you cannot understand anything right you cannot understand anything that's not possible okay so uh, what the corporate is demanding i was over there that what is corporate demanding over here corporate is demanding that as an individual we should be able to grasp all those things it can be a file it can be a binary it can be a pdf file reach it to a level that you can understand those things nobody is saying okay that you need to do a malware analysis of that thing no that is a separate job position your thing is you are able to detect correct once it is detected then you can drill down and you can map it to different different things right so that's the reason like as you can see right now like whatever written as a target audience we are belonging to all these things somebody said you are an analyst somebody said you are it professional 10 years 7 year 14 year experience somebody said good at penetration testing incident response like you are engineer specialist over there so all these things are there right second thing if you read this pdf that's the reason i open this pdf as i have like we have already mentioned over here that we need to have fundamental command line linux windows basic concept of information security protocols routing security devices common things because these are the things which you see in this sim solution in general i'm taking very general logs six sys log you take system log you take these are very general general things okay you should be familiar but i will not say that if you don't know you cannot perform threat hunting you can perform right you cannot perform you can perform there's no issues right cool <clears throat> then you can uh, see this thing over here guys we have a content thing right so we will map it once we are completing everything we'll try to map this thing right okay so first thing first over here we have total uh, i think seven things over here with us okay that end with hand hunting with the elk okay but before that what we need to learn that will start off today i'll first of all explain you what things we are going to start today okay so uh like threat hunting terminologies common common things are there pyramid of pain apt hash value cyber kill chain diamond model analysis right all these things are mentioned over here we'll start like one by one and case study we'll try to implement as much as we can do over here okay general discussion then my turn attack framework to a very deep level i would say these are very short written things as you can see on the screen 
pre and post detection data collection hunting tactic finding procedure right all of these are short written things but when you go the process is like huge huge process over here. okay so we'll try to cover these things not in just one go we'll we'll devote good time to it okay then network hunting uh, traffic hunting over here as you can see different protocols over here right you can see arp traffic icmp traffic tcp udp http https right somebody you can say like if you have https you can downgrade or you can strip off this thing to http that is also possible okay that thing is also possible so we'll take all this possibility network hunting and forensics plus we will take up some tin case study over here right case study will be there but there will be no answer right so don't try out any googling or any stuff answer you will not get anywhere this is like first and foremost and upfront thing to you guys so that will be a challenging thing to us okay this is there then uh, web hunting there are things like web shell uploads attack is there web shell uploading is there file upload detection rfi lfi detections xss analyzing web server logs in terms of any attack so that can be covered but it depends on like how much log analysis power we have with us not everyone is good at anything right so we can take most of the possibilities over here which are regular nowadays injection like somebody was saying log 4j so there was a j and di injection over there java uh, like template injection over there right so that will take up and uh, over here like you have endpoint hunting Endpoint hunting is uh, important first to follow over here. We should be having good understanding of Windows infra over here, right? When I say Windows infra, that means I'm talking about Active Directory, okay? So we'll be talking about some of the critical processes, baselining, threat hunting with partial. That means we are going to touch up partial scripting little bit over here which we can learn up easily right because windows in infra itself is a big thing big big stuff okay not in just terms of partial we can talk about kql queries or hunting queries which you can find it uh, inside um, sentinel as well plus on the github regular uh, open source as well and you can do the stuff okay malware part we are going to learn up over here um, there is a thing which is known as like redline ioc thing right uh, we will check up this and we'll check up another tool as well which is good for like malware hunting because once anybody give you a malware you will be running into a sandbox okay then memory forensics which you can do up on that particular exe or you can do it on that particular machine or you can do it on a particular image file iso img e01 any other any other stuff right so it will be more touching forensics part this module right case study would be there right and uh, <clears throat> we can consider some uh, ongoing things right some ongoing things some ongoing case study we can consider over there and hunting with elk that's the last part because you all guys are familiar already with log and all this stuff so that's the reason like we put it on the end because log is being clear to everybody most of the thing i'm not saying like i am also good at logs raw logs right i'm talking about raw logs but here because we learned all of the methodologies to hunt which things you can check in an image in an uh, exe file in an uh, malicious stuff okay so all this thing we will be implementing over here you can stimulate at your end also right and we all can see uh one by one let's suppose i perform an attack and we go to the another machine check the logs what we can pull down can we map it to something what we learned so far in the journey so that's the reason it has been like plotted at the end of this uh interesting courseware right so a lot of things to touch upon guys over here right so i want to start off with this part guys uh basically apt TTPs, this pyramid of pain, hash value, cyber kill chain, diamond model, right? 
and this next part of it is like miter attack framework right so collaboratively i will take like first module and second module together because that make will that will make some sense a practical implementation so when i start off with this thing the first part which is written threat hunting terminology that is like threat and its types right this tool is there okay and you will see like this looks like a car key right and four buttons are there that means you can store four algorithm inside it right four algorithms you can install it that means you can store and capture four things inside okay now you will see the structure right it will have like frequency and this thing is there right yes mr arul you are saying something right ah uh, no 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 sorry i oh. didn't check if my mic was cool, cool, cool. no problem no problem so you can do it easily right and if you come to the link right you can all bookmark this device won't cost you much like 100 125 dollars right ethical i'm not like telling you or describing you anything unethical it is like something which you use in a Great definition. So have a look around. Many of us use RFID technology in our daily lives. These digital key cards often provide easy and convenient access to all of the places that we frequent on a regular basis. Our home, office, parking structure, pool, etc. But until now, there's been no easy way to copy these devices, leaving you vulnerable to expensive fees should you lose one and inconveniencing you when you need to share access with a spouse, friend, housekeeper, or dog walker. And having a different key card for each location can be a hassle. Enter Keezy, a small device that fits on your key ring, allowing you to copy up to four RFID devices. So as you can see, right, as you can see, like they are storing actually four different algorithms over here they are trying to store right office home gym right they are trying to store the, kind of the process of copying an rfid credential onto keezy is simple first hold down the button you would like to copy the rfid credential to when the led light turns you have to just just guys you have to i will say just hold the thing and uh, press the button once it is like turning down to red that means it is cloning once it is turning green it is co cloned right in that manner the card or anything can be cloned red, easily. simply hold keysy over the key fob or key card right? the led will blink red while keysy is reading the device when the process is complete the led will turn green to use it simply press the button near the reader and it will work just like the original how to stop this cloning of card? Now a threat, when you say hunt, it can be any threat. It can be a physical threat too. You should know these things are working, right? In real life, it is working. You can order, it will come to your home no like unethical thing right this is how we bypass the physical security one example one example i give you right now we use a regular card right to entry and exit from the company how to stop that thing uh just make a card right that would make sense now this card is there okay what they have done they have put one more metal plate above the card right now that thing will be blocked and Let's suppose you want to go to a biometric machine again and you want to present the card, right? So actually you need to open from the clip and then they can do it. So this is a metal plate, like a thin metal plate is there. So the card becomes like a little bit heavy, but it is very difficult to clone the things. Okay, so the red one, the red line which you see, that's the original card and the black one is a metal plate. So there is a clip above it. Okay, there is a clip above it. You need to open the uh, clip, right? So there is a gap between the original card and the metal plate that allows the energy to pass through. 
and the gate is opened over there that's like a physical security right a physical thing which i have seen at two three corporates all around like delhi and bangalore right they are being using these things to protect physically right yes logically if you think uh, there are like key sizes there uh, encrypted pair thing is there or you use like uh, encryption you can have a one more rotation one more round over there in the encryption or you can have your own inbuilt algorithm right but there are people there are people as you can see the latest news if you see honda civic i think uh, honda civic 2008 to 2013 models all of the models can be unlocked and start without the use of the access keys so that is the latest news that people have done right two three days back i have seen this thing